from this waiting room, we can actually have multiple users connect. So many students, a teacher can join in here, multiple teachers, all with different devices to be added to this waiting room where the teacher will have full control over whose device or devices can actually be shown. You can actually show up to four screens sim simultaneously. So if you get your entire class populated here in this waiting room with, I don't know, group projects or individual students with their iPads wanting to show something from their screen, you'll have full control over which you can tap and show one at a time or you can show two at a time, three at a time, four at a time is the maximum. And this waiting room, I believe, holds up to 39 participants. And then you can show them however you want. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll connect a couple of them just to show you a little bit about how that looks, how it behaves. And I'm gonna be using the Screen Share app on my laptop as one of them. So it's remembering the previous code. Notice here that 765 was from a previous connection. And I actually did reset this code. Um, so it's a new one. So I'll have to erase the one that's on my laptop and type the new code in. So 945268. 268. And I'll call that one Ben, that's fine. We'll enable touch. I'm going to enter the waiting room. Remember, it's not going to show until the teacher gives it permission to show. So now there I am just in the waiting room waiting, you know, to be shown. I'm going to connect another device now. I'm actually going to connect my phone. And since my phone is not an Apple phone, I have to use the app. So this app is called My Promethean, I believe, something like that. And it's very similar in appearance to um, the app on you know, Windows. There's the screen share icon. And again, it's remembering a previous code. So I'm going to type in the new code of 945268. 945268. And I don't want the name to appear as Ben because that could confuse it with the device that I already have in. So in this one, I'm going to just say Paul. All right, there's Paul and share my screen. And now it is going ahead and load there and there Paul is now added to the list in the waiting room with now two devices. Notice that there's no green circle next to that one because phones and tablets do not support touchback. You're only going to have touch screen functionality wirelessly if you're connected with an actual computer using that screen share app from the software center. So you can add up to 39 different participants and let's go ahead and share two of these at a time now so you can see how that looks. So I'm in the waiting room with two devices. They're, those are the devices. And I'm going to tap this checkbox here for Ben, my laptop, and Paul for the phone. And two selected. You can select up to four at a time, remember. But for this purpose, let's just do two and then hit share. So now there is the laptop being displayed on the left and the phone is black because it's actually asking me on my phone um, start recording. It's asking for permission. So I'm going to hit start now. And it is now sharing the phone screen on the right. Now keep in mind that these are not just snapshots of the screen. It is an actual live feed of the screen. So if I open up an app like Firefox, it's loading and you'll see that will actually open up there. So we have the exact display in real time being displayed and I can move the mouse and you'll see it moving up there as well. And then over here, same deal. If I go to my home screen, now it changed. Picture of my girls there. So that is pretty much it. You can do that with up to four devices simultaneously. It will kind of create a nice even grid for you. And at any time you can hit the X's to get students out of there. So let's say I don't want the phone connected anymore. Phone is now gone. And it should be showing me just the primary or the only connected device now, which is the laptop. And if I want to get rid of both, remember you can go back to the waiting room here. Just look for that little symbol. We can see the devices are still in the waiting room. To kick them out of the waiting room, we can hit these X's. And just a little note here on naming. Uh, you saw me name these Ben and Paul. 
you probably already thought about this. Students, um, yes, they'll have the option to put whatever name they want in, just like Kahoot if you've ever had the joy of dealing with students getting creative with their naming. So I would recommend, you know, giving them some ground rules on what kind of names you expect them to use to, to help it be a little bit easier. If they're using the app on an iPad, so on their district issued iPad using the app, their name may automatically be set. I believe it is just going to be EASD and then a five digit number, something like that. So you may need to be ready for how to differentiate who that is, or you can have students let them know how to find that number on their iPad. It's under their kickstand on the uh, barcode label. It should have a five digit number that'll match whatever it gets thrown into there. But that's just a little bit about how to get students connected wirelessly using this screen share functionality, these active panels. It's, it's quite nice, especially the fact that you can show multiple screens at the same time and you have full control over who can and can't show, how to kick people out, how to wait, get people back in. And uh, one other thing I wanted to mention here, notice that when you are casting, in the upper corner of the screen, it'll have a little reminder about the name of the panel and the code to get into the waiting room. So if any students come in late or someone gets kicked or something or they forgot to connect when they were supposed to, um, they can go ahead and just open the app on their own and then type that number in and get into that waiting room and you'll be able to see more people popping up as more people get connected. You can always just kind of flip back and forth between the waiting room and what it is that you're sharing to deal with uh, getting new students in or getting some students out. So what we're going to do here is hit the screen share button here to bring up the waiting room with the code as well as the name of the panel and this one is EIS 121. And now if we're looking to use AirPlay to get a phone connected that is an iPhone or this would also work on an iPad, you're going to swipe down from the upper right hand corner and then look for the screen mirroring option that appears right here. And then from there, you're going to wait for the name of the panel to appear. Again, this one is EIS-121. You'll tap that on the phone and then enter this code to be entered into the waiting room. Here's a little tip about how to refresh the PIN code that you need to use to connect devices to this panel wirelessly. So if you're going to be connecting something, remember to open up the toolbar from any of these little dots or little arrows and then use the screen share app. That'll open up this little menu here with the name of your panel and your panel ID. That panel ID will not change from class to class unless you tell it to, or from day to day even. So 945268 is the same code that I used the last time that I tried connecting something to this panel. If for some reason you want to reset this code, say for example you have multiple classes that rotate through, and you want to be sure that no one is going to be accidentally or intentionally connecting to your panel from a different room, it might be a good idea for you to refresh this code periodically. So do know that when you refresh the code, it will, it will automatically disconnect anything that still happens to be connected. So if you have any students or anyone else in that waiting room, this will kick them out. But refreshing the code gives us a fresh six digit number that students or anyone else can use to connect and get into that waiting room. And it might be a good idea to do that if you have any students that might take advantage of that you know, feature to connect when they're not supposed to connect. Okay. Another little tip from the waiting room when you have devices connecting wirelessly, whether it's your own laptop connecting wireless, wirelessly or, or and or students connecting, when you have multiple students in here, there are a couple more options that you have for when you're wirelessly presenting. You can sort them alphabetically or by position. You know, position would be, you know, who entered first would be in this position. Whoever entered last would be at the bottom of that. You do have the option to make this screen smaller. Like right, that, it basically takes you out of the waiting room. Going back to the waiting room. One thing that I would recommend checking out is the gear icon right here to take you into the waiting room options. But this is also for how things are projected wirelessly. You want to be sure that picture quality is sent, set to best. Fastest, it might respond quicker. It's going to have less of a delay. There's always a little bit of a delay when you're doing wireless projection. But best picture quality we found is probably your best bet. 
but if you do find that things are lagging or getting weird, you can also try the fastest option just to see what works best for you. Show names of devices that are currently sharing. I would recommend having that on, and it is on by default. So that way, if there's something that's being shared, it's not a mystery, but you may want it to be a mystery for whatever reason you may have. Just remember that if you turn that off, it's going to stay off until you remember to turn it back on. And anonymous device screen sharing is probably not a good thing to have at all times. So just keep that in mind when you're uh, doing things in your class with your panel. Show the panel name and ID while devices are sharing. That is that little box that appears in the upper right hand corner. I would recommend leaving that on so that way if anyone comes in late or someone forgot to get connected when they were supposed to, they can have a reminder of what that code is and the name of what they're looking for to share to without having you stop everything to go back and bring it up for them. Any changes you make in there, just remember to hit the save button. And that is just a little bit more about what you have access to here within the screen share utility of your active panel.